G'day, welcome back to Buildsum, and uh, this is the third video on the timber frame building with a cut-in floor, and I was just explaining that once we actually get our roof on, and we're more or less for waterproof inside, good idea to get our strip flooring loosely cut and laid in the actual room where it's going to stay, gives it a chance to season to the site, and also to gives us something to work on. Once that's done, we can then start to lock the building up. We'll get it all in, uh, cladded. So, on the outside here, you can see we've got a big gap underneath our joist, um, and that's going to cause a problem with our cladding. So, what we can put in is what they call ribbon bearers, and it can be joist material. It doesn't have to be bearer material, but it's just a piece of timber to close in that gap, give us somewhere to fix our our cladding to. Of course, especially with cladding, we should sark or isolate our our frame, and we have to put our doors and windows in. And not only this time do we have to worry about the flashing that comes attached to the window, but now we actually have to add some additional flashing around our window. So, of course, we're going to have cladding ending at the window. You need to put flashing behind it. So, if any water gets behind the flashing, sorry, behind the cladding. It will run down the flashing and it will run out of the building, not um, continue into the building. If the window was lower than our eave line, we'd have to do over the top of the window as well to get the water stop to stop um, sitting on top of our window. So we need to flash around our windows. We can then put in our cladding. Our cladding should actually go in behind the flange of the window and. As I said, the flashing is behind that, and I would, as I put those boards in as well, I would be silicon or putting in silicon to make sure that joint there is waterproof. Although we will do more to help waterproof it in a minute. So cladding goes up to the height required, and you can go a little bit past it in this case because then I've built my my um, e frame on top of the cladding. Just so happens to be in line with the top of the window in this particular circumstance. Our eave sheet can then go in. And this time I'm going to put architrave around the window first. And again, that will help to waterproof the end of that board. And then I can put in my quad. Just makes a need a finish rather than trying to finish architrave to quad with a scribe or something. So that's the outside done. We can then duck inside, and now is the time to actually fit and turn this flooring over, and uh, screw it, nail it, not screw it, nail it, nail it in. You'll notice that there's not much of this plate left because of the thickness of the flooring. So another thing that normally happens with a cut-in floor is we put in skirting blocks. That just gives us somewhere to actually nail our skirting off to once uh, our plasterboard's in, instead of having to rely on our studs. So then the procedure's very familiar. Plasterboard, or whatever your internal lining is, ceiling, cornice, architrave around the window, skirting on the floor. And you can see that'd be nice and easy to nail off because of our skirting block. And there we have it. That is a timber frame building, well timber clad building with a cut in floor. <laughs> 